Measure four starts out just like the previous measures. We're going to have PIMA planted on their strings. We're going to play the sixth string, play the E minor, replant PIMA on their strings to damp the chord and the bass note, play the sixth string again, and then play the chord. Like that. On the third beat, instead of doing the right hand damp as I recommended earlier, this time just go ahead and lift the chord. So the first chord we damp with the right hand, the second chord lift. The reason for that is because we have to shift to play the octave B's which starts the melody. So for freedom of movement it's better to just lift to cut the E minor chord and then shift. For the intro your left arm and elbow will be hanging naturally nice and relaxed. But when you hit measure four, most people are going to have to wing their elbow out in order to play this B minor 7 formation right there. That's really hard for most people to play with their elbow in the natural hanging position. So in order to do that, you'll prepare your elbow position. As soon as you hit measure four, start winging out that left elbow. So when you shift, you're already in the optimal position to play that formation. So you're going along normal position, you hit measure four, you start winging out, and you're there. Then as you continue on, you'll assume a more normal hanging elbow position. Now, on beats four and five, things get a little complicated and we're going to take step by step. So we've played the first two E minor chords. We've damped both of them. And at this point, the sixth string is still ringing. We don't want that to keep ringing because we're about to play the octave Bs. And that high B is the start of the melody. So we don't want a bunch of bass notes ringing in the bass, muddying up the sound as our melody kicks in. So we want to damp that sixth string. And as before, we have two choices. If your thumb, if you have a fat thumb, wide thumb, you can use the back of your thumb to damp the sixth string as you play the B octaves, like that. Or, the more conventional way, go ahead and play the B, the B octaves, and then damp the sixth string, like that. Now, it's going to be a little different, feels a little different from the intro, because in the intro you just played the single B. This time you're playing the octave Bs. So it does have a little different feel to it. So practice that over and over again until you get it so that when you play the Bs, the sixth string isn't ringing and the Bs are absolutely clean. Either method of damping is fine. Then the next step is to add the open E. And you notice the B's we play with P and I, and then the open E we play with M. So add that into the mix. No big deal. Then you play the chord, and the trick here is we're going to have to keep the B ringing in the bass. And we're going to have a look at that in a second. But going on here, the chord, if you use the back of your thumb to play, to do the damp, as you played the Bs, you can now use PIM to play the chord, or you can use IMA, either way, whatever feels best to you. If you did the string damp, by cutting the sixth string after you played the Bs, definitely use I, M, and A, because your thumb is sitting here, if only for a split second, and um, is out of commission, really, to, to come here to play the third string. So use I, M, and A in that case. So again, if you do the string damp with the thumb there, then use I, M, A to play the chord. 
And then finally, the last note, play with M. I use M rest stroke to start bringing that out as the focus of the music since that's the melody. Now, we could do a rest stroke on the open B and the open E, but it's pretty clumsy to do that. You can try it if you want. You're stuck with playing the G free stroke because it's part of the chord. So I wait until I come to the A to play the, uh, a, the note A with the M finger rest stroke. For the fifth beat, you have, again, a choice of two ways of doing the bar. One is to do a conventional bar, flat bar. So you play your B octaves, you're on the fifth string B with the tip of your first finger, and then you simply collapse down onto a five string bar to play the chord. Like that. The other way is to play the Bs and do a partial bar by allowing the tip of your first finger to collapse like that, and then you're barring just the third, fourth, and fifth strings. For some people, that's a little easier to do, um, get a little more leverage, but either way will work. Here are the two bars from this angle. There's your octave Bs, collapse into a five string bar, conventional bar like that, or Octave Bs collapse the tip of the first finger into a partial bar, barring just the third, fourth, and fifth strings. Now, either way that you do this, the whole purpose here is to hold the B, the low B, to keep it ringing through that beat, those two beats, beats four and five. You have to make sure, do not put the finger down on the tip of the finger like this, because if you do that and you collapse your bar, you're going to lose the note. You're going to fall off of the string. So you intentionally want to land on more of the pad of the finger like that, not on top vertically on the tip, but come from the side. It doesn't matter if you touch the fourth string. In fact, I am. It's muted because we're not playing the fourth string. So land on the pad, more of a flat presentation like that. So when you put the bar down, you don't lose that fifth string. It keeps ringing, regardless, again, of either bar, the partial bar like that or the conventional five string bar. Make sure that's how you put your finger down on the, on the low B. Then you'll add these two fingers and then finally the little finger on the A. Now when you practice this, don't try and do all of that at once. Do what we did earlier, take step by step. Now we made it up to here. So now the next thing you do is to add that chord and do the bar collapse. And stop there. Do that over and over again until you're able to do it securely and you get a nice clean B that's ringing through there. Again, regardless of what bar technique you use, just practice that much. You might even want to focus on just doing that until you get that down. Notice the rhythm, it's not da da da, but it's the more dotted, that triplet feel da da da, da da da. So make sure you have that. Then you'll add the little finger and you'll play that little finger rest stroke with the M finger. I'll explain a little in the next measure why you're using M to play the A note there. And there, when you add that little finger, keep the third finger on the G, even though it, you know, it's not necessary. Uh, it, it will be the guide finger to go to the next note in the next measure. So keep that down. So at the end of the measure, you'll have all four fingers down. So once you have this down, add the A and stop on that. Focus on just that, or if you want to try it in context, that's fine. Just so you're practicing it correctly all the time. Don't practice mistakes. 
do little pieces, little chunks at a time.